Salamtana Tena Yistalin Shabbat Shalom Senbet Salam We are continuing the 36th uh, sabbatical portion The Orit Kafil or the Torah Parsha Which in the Hebrews call Be'ha'aloteka uh, And in the revised Amharic Bible or the Arab of Nagus Neges is called uh, Sitalekus, which means uh, when you, it has, it has two related meanings. And the Amharic is when you light, referring to the, the, the candle, the candle stick or the menorah, the lampstand, more correctly, the, the, the lampstand and the, the wicks. The wicks, the idea of candlestick, as we already mentioned, is, is false in this sense when you understand that candles came in much later on within the, the, the history of um, the history of this present world. So we have to understand that in the earlier time, we we're speaking about the oil, the oil lamp. So we're speaking on the order of the Sarawit or the order of the host. And at this particular portion, seeing that we've already covered uh, two prior portions concerning the lampstand, the consecration of the Lewawian. In the first part, the second part was concerning the second Fasica or the Passover, as well as the guiding, the guiding cloud um, and, the, and the protecting, we can say, fire. Now we're touching on the silver the silver trumpets, the silver trumpets. Therefore, we have to go to the next chapter, which is chapter 10 of the Oritze Chulkwe, or the book of uh, Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 10, verse 1 and verse 1 and 2 concerning the silver trumpets. And just a note right here concerning um, the City to Ethiopia, Holy Ethiopian Covenant, Al Kidan Ethiopia, that the silver trumpets, the Melikat, is is blown on that fall festival and during the fall festival season that's known as the Feast of Trumpets that coincides with the Adis Zemin or the New Year. The Ethiopian New Year celebration, which also coincides with uh, uh, Ras Hasana or Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah. So the silver trumpets that you are viewing right here is from uh, illustration from the 1890 Holman Bible, the 1890 Holman Bible, and we can see we can see the the um. Uh, the ram's horn, the shofar. We also have the straight. You see the straight trumpet, which is normally known in Ethiopia as the melikat. Now, there's another picture as well from the 1894 Treasures of the Bible, which is a European um, rendition um, of what the Levites um, look like, which we know is from a Eurocentric, a Eurocentric misconception there, but this is concerning the Feast of Trumpets here. Now in Ethiopia, as we've mentioned, if you watch some of the videos, you'll see the long trumpet, you understand, and many of them are metal trumpets, and here is where the origination in the Belui Kidan, or the Old Covenant, which we know as the Torah or the Orit Scrolls, we find the silver trumpet and the 19th portion of the Order of the Host concerns the silver assembly trumpets. And we're going to touch on verses 1 and 2 to open this up. Besam Ab, where well, well, manifested Kedus Ahadu, Amlak, Ka Orita Zehulkwe, Miraf Aser, Kut Rocha, Andina Hulet, and Demilo, Egazi Abi Herim Musen, and Di Bulo Tenagro, Hulet Yabur Melakotocha at Efitefe, Le Ante Adarig, Mahibaruna Le Metarat, Kasafaracho Wimma Le Masa Guaza Yuhunuli. And the sustainer Yahweh, Baruchu, blessed be he, 
spake to Musa, Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly, the calling of the Mahibar. The Mahibar. Now, when we say we are the line of Judah society of his imperial majesty, and when we use that word society, Bamarinya, in Amharic, the word that we're using for society is the very same word that's translated here in the KJV or the King James Version of the Bible as the assembly. Gin Bamarinya in the Royal Amharic Bible or the Arab, it is Mahibarun, Mahibaruna Lemetarat for the calling for the calling of the society, for the calling of the assembly. And this word also is translated elsewhere as congregation. Now, we just want to make the link with what we mean by society. What is it that we mean by society when we say we're the line of Judah? Society, we are the line of Judah, Mahibar. Mahibar. So here in Numbers chapter 10, or Rit Zehulkwe, or Be Ibraist Akwankwa Be Midbar, or Midbar, which is the book of Numbers, verse 2, chapter 10, verse 2, it says, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of silver, of a whole piece, of one entire piece shalt thou make them that thou mayest use them to utilize these two trumpets of silver who let ye bur melakotoch to use them for the mahibaruna lemet arat for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps ka safaracho wimele masguaz yehunule kuter sos verse 3 who let tum melakotocha betanefu gize mahibaru hulu wede ante wede megananyo dinquana de jaf ye sabisabu ye sabisabu when and when they shall blow with them and when these trumpets shall be blown all the mahibar all the assembly mahibaru Hulu shall assemble themselves to thee what ante at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation what a meganania dinquana de jafa yisabis yisabisabu what a meganania to the gathering to the media dinquan tent he's saying to the media tent Bamarinya, the Targum, even in today's usage of the word Megananya, Bizuhan is uh, in the Taragomo is translated to mean um, Megananya Bizuhan, mass media. So the word Megananya is media. So then the Targum is often called the tent of the meeting. Megananya Dinquan. Here it is translated in the King James Version of the Bible as the tabernacle of the congregation. The congregation. So we have to get a clearer understanding of what these words actually mean and signify. So let's understand this about the silver trumpets. Now, Ha Elohim, he told and instructed Musa to have two silver trumpets made to summon the community. To summon the society, the community of the Beta Israel, and to set it in motion or on the journey, to make the journey and the motion. Now, in verse 3, we learn that upon long blast of the two horns, or both of these silver trumpets, the whole or entire community was to assemble before the entrance or the dejaf of the megananya megananya bizuhan the tent of his media the meeting place the media the tent of the congregation according to numbers chapter 10 verse 3 now 
in verse 4, Kuter Arat, we learn that upon the blast of one of the trumpets, the silver trumpets, the chieftains, the chieftains were to assemble, were to assemble themselves. And we learn this in verse 4. So when we turn our Bibles to verse 4, we find that it reads thus, Bamarinya, it says in the Amharic, it says, And Melekata Sinefa Talak Ochu Ye Israela A Elaf Alek Och Wada Ante Ye Sabisabu Ye Sabisabu And if they blow but with one trumpet and Melekata Sinefa then the princes which are the heads or the chiefs the chieftains the Alek Och of the thousands, of the thousands, the A'elaf of Israel, ye Israel la A'elaf al-Koch, where ante ye sabisabu, shall gather themselves to thee. Now, as we move further to verses 5 and 6 of Numbers chapter 10, we learn that the short blast directed the divisions that were encamped on the east on the east to move forward and a second set of short blast directed those on the south on the south side to move forward and we learn this in verses 5 and 6 melakatnima kaf baladinta sitnafu be misrak abkul ye safruta yigwazu when ye blow an alarm is the king james translation now let's pay attention to this right here king james translates this as saying when ye blow an alarm then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward now the word alarm is not really found there in the royal amharic bible it's not saying alarm but let's look at and listen to what is said it says melakatanim and the trumpet kaf bale melakatanim kaf bale dent uf a loud a kaf a great a loud in other words voice kaf a high to say a high dent Sitnafu, when it blows with a high sound, Melakatanima kaf baladim ta sitnafu. Then the camps that lie or are situated on the east part, be misrak abakulia yesafarut yiguazu shall go forward. Kut er sadist, who let nyawunima kaf baladim ta sitnafu. Be debuba bekula ye safaruta ye guazu. Le mas guaza melakatina ye nefalu. When ye blow an alarm the second time, or the, 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 the second loud or high dint, a kef bala dint, a sitinefu, be debub bekul. Then the camps that are situated on the south side, be debu bekul ye seferuti guazu le mas guazu melakatina ye nefalu. They shall blow an alarm. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys or setting the camp now into motion. So what we're learning here is is what's called signaling. You understand this signaling. And so we have to learn this and understand the application for the camp and for the community, which is another beautiful example of the Yahweh or the divinely given instructions that help to bring the community together, that helps to keep the community and protect the community, and even the signaling for the movements Yovzen are very important for us to, to learn as well as to practice it and to put this into effect, into application. Now, 
as well as this, there were short blasts that were to be sounded when the Israelawiyan were at war against an aggressor who attacked them. So when the Beta Israel was at war with an enemy who attacked them and the trumpets, the silver trumpets were to be sounded as well on joyous occasions like the Addis Ahmed in Kedestiti uh, to Ethiopia, Holy Ethiopia and Kalakidan Ethiopia, festivals, the new moons, the burnt offerings, and the sacrifices of well-being. Now we learn this in Numbers chapter 9 as well as 10. And here we have, even in our Schofield Study Bible, the hard copy, chapter 10 verse 9 is highlighted where it says and if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you or down presseth the eye then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpet and and ye shall be remembered Ye shall be remembered before Yahweh, Eloheka, but before Yahweh, your God, and ye shall be saved. And ye shall be saved from your enemies. From your enemies. Bemiya gefachu huma telatlai. Bemidarachu wode selfa situ watu. Kef baladint melakato chuna nifu be egazi ab herima bamla kachu feet te tase balachu cut a lato chachu hum tidanalachu cut er aser degmo be destachu ken be be alatachu hum zemen. Be warima me bacha, be mikatela mesawa etachu huna, be de hinneta mesawa etachu lai, melekato chuna nifu, en ursuma be amla kachu a fita le metasebia yehonu la chuhal, ene egzi ab heram la kachu neng. Also, in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets, the silver trumpets, over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you. For a memorial, le metasebia yehonu lachuhal, before your God, before your Elohim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, is what he is saying right here. This is very, very important concerning the silver concerning these silver trumpets now we move into the into the next portion of this particular miraf this particular chapter where it's from the sinai the movement now the journeys are beginning from sinai to the ades barnea to the ades barnea now it's important to to um take good notes and to journ and, and to journal our 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 studies both in 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 private studies as well as in congregational you understand studies for one to take good notes you understand in one studies study time because there's a lot of elements that can only properly be understood by putting into effect the principle of 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 writing you understand of writing and notation as a reference point this is what it means to study to show oneself approved to elohim as a workman that need not be ashamed so there's something for a remembrance to what you're studying what you're learning what you still have to catch up on 
you know what I'm saying, or what you might have to ask one or have to look up. Some of these, some of these, some of these um, 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 words are not English words, are not ideas that we are readily because of 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 miseducation and not being taught about this. There's a lot of words, concepts, and ideas with which within our sabbatical studies and in our studies of scripture we have to develop the discipline to take good notes and to take good um, notations and to and to journal our studies so coming up we're, we're dealing with a, a, a very interesting word and concept called Kades Barnea or Kadesh Barnea I will ask you, what does it mean? How many of y'all right now understand and know what this word means? What does Kadesh or Kadesh mean? What does Barnea mean? What is the context? What happened there? So there's many questions and relevant questions that we need to ask concerning these particular words that are not regular English words, and even for many of the English words, we have to look up the etymology to really understand in context what the language is saying. Because he says, to not be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. So in this process of being born again and this rebirthing process and and being as a child again this is what it means that the law is our schoolmaster as we go through the sabbatical portions the sabbatical readings and the sabbath feedings we are utilizing the principle of the law as our schoolmaster as a born again being born again into the Al Kidan, into the returning to the Holy Covenant in the authority and name of Adonai Yeshua HaMushia, in the authority of Gietachin Jesus Christos, to the glory of our God Father Kedus Abatachin. So now we are touching on the journeys. In the second month of the second year, the cloud lifted from the tabernacle so we so a month now has passed since the second passover that has been um mentioned in chapter nine of numbers so now we're in the second month of the second year the cloud lifted from the tabernacle and the israelites set out on their journeys from the wilderness of sina or sinai towards the wilderness of Paran. This is the first March. This is the first March. So it's important for us to understand that even though you can read through this chapter, this is why we say a good study Bible is, is, is necessary. And this is why we provide at the www.lojsociety.org the free downloadable, for example, the Sabbath house readings which gives us the chart of the 54 sabbatical as well as holy day readings from the scriptures and the Schofield reference Bible, which is uh, the digital version, the PDF version, the free download as well. Because in the Schofield study Bible, what is good is that they provide certain breaks as well as a, a, a certain reference point. So one in studying it w would understand that a month now had passed. It's not the first month where Fasica comes in, but now the second month. It's not the first year, but now it's the second year. Now they're beginning their first March. The first March, you understand? We have Numbers chapter, chapter 10, verses verses 11 and verse verses 11 and verse 12 let's turn there and let us go over this verse 11 and verse 12 kut asra'an behulatnyawum amet behulatnyaw war kawaruma be hayanyaw kan indi hone Demanawa ka misikuru madaria lai tenesa. And it came to pass on the 20th day 
of the second month in the second year that the cloud, the demonal, was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony or the tabernacle of his testimony and the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness. They're coming now out of the wilderness of Sina or the wilderness of Sinai, if you please. And the cloud rested in the wilderness of Faran, which according to the King James uh, translation is Paran, Bamarinya, according to the revised Amharic Bible, the Rab of Negus Neges, it's Faran, Be Faran Midre Beda Kome. And so the cloud, it rested in the wilderness of Paran. Now, why is this significant? We're going to learn very shortly why this is significant. Because now, Musa, Moses, Ask his father-in-law. Now, his father-in-law here is called Hobab, son of uh, Ruel, the Medianite. Elsewhere, he is known as Yotor or Jethro, the Medianite. And the woman who Musa married was his daughter. And she's called uh, Sipara or Zipporah, the Ethiopian. So let's let's understand this. But Moses asks his father-in-law to come with the Israelites, promising to be generous with him. But he replied that he would return. He replied that he would return to his to his native land. So we're here in Numbers chapter 10, we're at verse 29 and verse 30. So we move forward over these verses where it explains the hosts and the 12 tribes. And we move on down. We ease on down to verse, uh, let's get to verse 20, 28. Let's begin with verse Haya. Cement where it says in Dihu yes Rale Jocha Guzo Beye Sarawi Tachoa Nebra and Narsuma Teguazu. Thus were the journeyings of the children, the Bane Yusrael, according to their armies or their host, their Beye Sarawi Tacho, when they set forward, when they journeyed. Kutara. Haya Zetain Musim Ye Mistun Abbat Ye Mida Yamawiwuna Ye Araguelina Lija O Babin Egazi Abiher Le Inante Eset Walo Wadalo Sifra in the Hedalen Egazi Abiher Sile Israela Mela Kamina Negara Tenagroalina Ante Kenyagarna Melkamina Nadargil Halen Alo. And Moses said to Hobab, the son of Raguel, or elsewhere, elsewhere known as Ruel, the Medianite, Moses' father in law, we are journeying to the place of. Of which Yahweh the sustainer, to him be the praise, said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, Kenyagar, na, for Yahweh, Baruch, who blessed be he, have spoken good concerning Israel. Kutar, Kutar Salasa, Arsum. Al Hedim Negargin 
ወደ አግሬና ወደ ዘመዶቼ የሄዳለው አለው and he said to him obab hobab said to musa i will not go but i will depart to mine own land and to my kindred and to my kindred qutr salasa and verse 31 ar rusum and he said ibak በምድረ በዳ የሚና ሰፈር በትን አንተ ታውቃለህና እንደ አይኖ ቻችን ማት ሆን ለናልህና አትተውን and he said Musa now replying to Obab who is his father in law his Ethiopian wife's father or Yotor also known as Yotor now Moses is saying to him Abaka please leave us not i pray thee for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness and thou mayest be to us instead instead of eyes now literally it says in the i know chachnim and as our eyes to honli nalna tahona lena lehna that you be come to us as our as our eyes as our eyes kutar salasa hulet verse 32 kanyam gara bitahed egzi abher kamiya darglin melkam nagar hulu inya le ante nadargalen ale and it shall be if thou go with us yea it shall be that what goodness yahweh the sustainer gizawi herotu subhat to him be the praise shall do to us shall do to i and i the same will we i and i do to thee kutara salasa sos ka egzi abi harim tarara ye sos ta kana men gida ya hilla ta gwazu ye egzi abi harim ye kidanu tabot ye miya dar betna sifra ye faliga la chosen ye sos kan men gida kadama cho and they departed from the mount this is another important terminology to make a note of the mount of the lord they departed from and they departed from the mount of yahweh three days three days journey and the ark of the covenant ye kidanu tabot went before them kadamacho went before them before them and the key before them has to do with kadam kadam or kadamawi but in this sense kadamacho went before them in the three days journey to search out a resting a resting place for them so yekidanu tabot the 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 ark of his covenant the ark of his covenant went before them kutar salasa arat kasafracho wema betagwazu gize ye egzi ab her demna kenna kenna belayacho neber and the cloud the same guiding cloud of yahweh was upon them by day and they went out of the camp or was upon them day day you know as to say day by day ukutara salasa amist verse 35 musim tabotu abete guaze gize abetu tenesa talato chihima yibetunu yamiya teluhima kafitihe yishishu yil nabar and it came to pass when the ark the tabot tabotu his ark 
set forward, when it's set forward, when it's set betagwaze gize in the time that it journeyed, that Muse said, Muse said this, and these are key words in 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 Tabot uh, Christina, in, in what they call Tabot Christianity or the true Ethiopic faith, the Ritita Hymenot. This is key here where what he said. He said, Abitu Tenesa Telato Chihim Yibetanu Yemiat Eluhima Kafitihe Yishishu Rise up Abitu Adunay and let make thine enemies be scattered and make them that hate thee flee flee before the Kuter Salasa Sidist Barafem Gize Abatu Ode Israel Ilfa Ila Fata Temelesa Yilla Nebur. And when it rested, he, Musa, Moses, said this He said, Return, O Lord, return Adoni to the many thousands to the many thousands of israel now these two verses i also have highlighted right here it's very important in this context right here verses 35 and 36 now if you are familiar with this particular verse you know this is the beginning or this is within psalm 68 which is the only psalm or one of the few psalms but the psalm where where the name jah jah as in jah rastafari connected with the king of kings of ethiopia kedamawi haila salase where jah is found in the scripture early rastafari the early Rastafarians, um, many of the elders, when seeking to explain to men and people some of the basics of Rastafari, would employ Psalm 68. And Psalm 68, verse 4, is where we find the name in the King James Version by his name Jah and rejoice before him. But this psalm is connected intimately with this portion this kufl of the orit or this torah parsha or portion right here in numbers chapter 10 verses 35 and 36 especially verse 35 in verse 35 where it says abetu tenesa telatochihim yibetunu yemiat eluhim kafitihi yishishu where he says, rise up, Adoni, Abertu, I father, his father, O oh, father of the house, and make thine enemies, make your enemies be scattered, and make them that hate thee flee before thee. You need to make a note of the connection of Numbers chapter 10, verse 35, with Psalm, the Psalm of David chapter or psalm verse one where it says let god arise let his enemies be scattered make them also that hate him flee before him you see the connection right here you see the connection to what moses said when when the ark set forward that was the key word it was, it was protocol there's a there's a protocol to true tabot christina as there was a protocol among the beta israel and it's unfortunate that in great part because of the apostasy and the falling away even among the the ethiopian church and that root of true tabot christina that much of this has been forgotten and therefore is not operational which is one of the spiritual reasons why the ark has not been seen in such a long time because there's a particular order and a particular protocol and this is what we are learning right here so this 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 operative word when the ark is moving forward 
as well as when the ark is resting or has rested is very very important and there are many keys many keys provided for provided for us now in going over this portion here just returning to where Moses had asked his father-in-law called Obab or Hobab the son of Ruel or Raguel the Medianite to come with the Israelites promising to be generous with him but Obab or Hobab he replied that he would return to his native land now Moses pressed him again noting that he could serve as the Israelites guide or actually what he says right here is a uh, very interesting another important notation in verse 31 thou mayest be to us instead of eyes or literally as our eyes be to us instead of eyes there's a glyph what Moses now says to his Medeanite or Ethiopian father-in-law here called Oba, but elsewhere Yotar or Jethro is a key link with that, that mystery, the mystery or the wisdom of Egypt. So the Egypt that Moses was learned in, the, e, the wisdom of the, Gibbet, uh, the, Kibbet, uh, the Coptic land that Moses was learned and mighty in word and deed, where he says to his Ethiopic father-in-law, he says to him, and thou mayest be to us instead, that thou mayest be to us instead of eyes in verse 31. In the oino chachinim te hona lina lehinna atatawen, leave us not. I pray thee, Ibak, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness. And thou mayest be to us instead of, not instead of AI, but instead of eyes, plural eyes. Now, plural eyes, and understand the order here, as there's a lot of two, the, the, the number two figures strongly in this section of scripture. So it reminds us of that glyph in ancient Egypt of, of, of the eyes, of the eyes. And this is what Musa being initiated into the wisdom of the Kabbat uh, or the Gibbet, the, the, the Coptic land, speaking to his father in law, you understand, or, or likelihood one of the initiators of Musa into, into the true Yahweh worship that was preserved in ancient Tobia or ancient Ethiopia. You understand, this is the wisdom of the Kabbat uh, or the Gibbet, the Coptic land. Now, as we go over this, we find that the Israelites had marched three days distance from Mount Sinai or Mount Sinai with the Ark of his covenant, Yekidanu Tabot, in front of them, Kedamacho, and Elohim's cloud was above them by day or and and daily numbers chapter 10 verse 33 and 34 now when the ark was to set out as we've just covered muse would say advance adone may your enemies be scattered and may your foes flee before you in verse 30 Five in verse 35 now when the ark of his covenant Yekidanu Tabot when it halted or when it rested Barrefem Gizeh he would say return Adonai you who are Israel's myriads of thousands in Numbers chapter 10 verse 36 and we've made the link between these key words and the opening words 
of Mezmur Dawid, the Psalm of David, Psalm 68. And that is a very important psalm because we all know that in that psalm, Psalm 68, when we turn to verse, uh, verse 31, we find Ethiopia written in that psalm in verse 31 where it says, Princes shall come out of Egypt. In this particular sabbatical portion, we have been discussing the princes, that these princes will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia or Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands to Elohim, to God. So we have Tabot Christina, uh, Ark Christianity. We have Ethiopia mentioned. We know the the Egypt and Ethiopia connection, even in the Balui Kidan, the Old Testament. We have these key words opening it up. We have verse four. You understand in the English translation, the King James translation, where it says, "Sing to God, sing praises to His name, extol Him that rideth upon the heavens." Or some translation says, "Upon or through the deserts." It's interesting that the heavens, according to certain Hebraic translations, read, extol him that rideth through the deserts. Here it says upon the heavens. So that's also an important note and link in meditation. By his name, Jah. By his name, Yah. Aya. By his name, Yah. And rejoice. And rejoice before him. So this psalm. This area of the Orit, the Ethiopia connection, is a very interesting reasoning and meditation. And there's much more that through diligent study can be found within those connective areas of Scripture. But what we're going to do right now, since we're at the end of chapter 10, is pause take a pause and then we're going to go from Sinai from Sina now to the Kades Barnea you understand the Kades Barnea and we're going to touch on the the second matter after the first march and the halt that took place in Paran or Faran we're going to talk about the fire of Adonai the fire of of the Lord at Tabera Tabera, another important area of scripture. So Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. Stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. <laughs> 